Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. And happy Easter. I can't tell you how this makes my heart feel so good to look out and see uh, almost a full church and it almost feels like things are right back to 2019. Remember that? So, uh, so glad to have you back here again uh, to join us for our Easter service and I know there's lots of people watching at home still as well and we're very pleased to have you joining us as well. We have a wonderful service plan. The choir's back, we've got the band here and all kinds of surprises going on. So you picked a great service to come to. Um, before we begin, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to, uh, to Nancy up there in our choir for decorating our church with the flowers, both here and I hope you noticed them when you came in the door as well. So thank you, Nancy, for doing that. Um, and also, we'd like to take a moment to share any celebrations. So if you have a celebration today or something you'd like to pass along, or if you're new today and you'd like to introduce yourself, we'd love to say a special welcome. I'm going to begin because I would like to express a very happy birthday to the man standing in the back corner. <laughs> Daniel is turning 60 on Tuesday. So Daniel, happy birthday. Anybody else celebrating today? We can wish you a happy birthday, Elf. Whose birthday? Martha. Martha. Martha, your daughter from our happy birthday to Martha. Well, if you are celebrating, we hope you have a wonderful day. Um, just a reminder that following the service today, we've got lots of chocolate in the back hall. So we hope you'll spend a few moments before you go on to your own festivities and join us for our chocolate festival in the back hall. Um, I know there's a couple of announcements. I'd like to invite those who have them to please come forward. Good morning, everybody. I guess you're saying to yourself, he's up there again? Doesn't he get enough time up there? Anyways, the reason why I'm up here is because I noticed in the newsletter there was this, just a little typing glitch about the euchre that's in May on the 13th. It's Friday, not Saturday. That's all I wanted to say, and I'll be selling the tickets West End of the Hall with all that chocolate. That's it. Good morning, my name is Sharon Folks and I'm the Youth Group Coordinator. Just a reminder that we have beautifully decorated cookies on sale uh, after the service. They're $5 for a bag of three cookies. Each cookie is decorated uniquely and by the Youth Group. Um, all proceeds will support our Algonquin trip. And another thing we have back there is a Easter photo booth. Uh, it's left over from last night from our Easter egg hunt. So if you'd like to take a photo with your family or your kids, it's there for you to, uh, to uh, use for today. Good morning. My name's Doreen Anderson and I'm a member of the cookbook planning team. Thank you to everyone who has submitted their suggestions <laughs> for the cookbook name. I'm happy to report that we have so far received 21 submissions for the contest. You still have till April the 22nd to submit your entries. We've also received an order for four cookbooks. And we've received our first recipe submission thanks to Sandra Corsi. I decided to try it out, and here it is. It's a blueberry banana muffin, and there are some in the back room after for refreshment. Um, I'm not going to promise that I'm going to try every recipe, though. For those of you that received the Northwest News, you will have seen the recipe submission form and instructions on how to send them to us. For those of you who do not receive the news, there are paper copies located at the greeting table in the narthex. We are asking for just one recipe per person at the moment. Um, we want to get as many people in the book as possible. 
Couple of ways to send the recipes. Send by email to office at nwbuc.ca and please include the word cookbook on the subject line. Place the form in the white mailbox outside at the front of the church or simply drop them off at the church. Deadline for submissions for recipes, April the 30th. So remember, two dates. Name and contest submissions by April 22nd and recipe submissions by April 30th. Our team is looking forward to our cookbook and, and putting it together for you. And, <laughs> <laughs> and there's no chocolate in it. <laughs> Thank you, Doreen. Just a couple more quick announcements. Um, Sharon alluded to an Easter egg hunt we had here yesterday. What a wonderful event it was. We had 50 kids uh, take part. I think we had over 1,000 eggs hidden all around the church. Um, and it was just an amazing, amazing night. So thank you to Sharon, folks, for uh, organizing that for us. It was really great, uh, a great evening. Um, for those uh, with children here today, there is a Sunday school program, which will start after the children's time. We also have a nursery. Now, uh, there's nobody supervising the nursery, so but you're still welcome to use it, but you do need to have a, an adult with you. Um, uh, there needs to be an adult supervision with your child if you would like to use the nursery. And finally, I'd just like to say a couple of uh, huge thank yous. Well, let me begin by saying that uh, Chris Fernando is our choir director, and he does all our live streaming um, through the computer. Uh, Chris caught COVID this week, so he's not here today. He's feeling better, he's feeling fine. But uh, I had a momentary moment of panic when I heard that. But uh, what's great about this church is people jump in. And we have two Daniel Johnsons who jumped right in. First of all, little Daniel Johnson up there, who is. Uh, he's one of our, our teens, and he's doing all the live streaming instead of all the cameras today. So thank you, Daniel. And then big Daniel Johnson over there is taking over the choir this morning. So thank you to Daniel. And we wish Chris and all of his family a fast recovery. Let's begin our Easter service now with our call to worship. We gather at the dawn of Easter Sunday to proclaim. We gather in the season of spring to proclaim. We gather in this community of love and life to proclaim. Happy Easter, one and all. Come, let us worship God. And our opening hymn is sing a happy hallelujah. I invite you to stand and let's sing together.
join me now uh, for our prayer of approach, which you'll again see on the screen. Please join me. Let us pray. Loving God, you are the joy of children finding gifts from the Easter Bunny. You are the tender shoot rising through the cracked earth of spring. You are the chipmunks chasing each other around the tree. You are a hug on a bad day. You are a surprise note in our mailbox. You are a whistle tune that makes us smile. You are the laughter and love that eases sadness. You are our joy, our hope, our refuge, and our strength. On this Easter Sunday, may we see your spirit in all and through all, a generous energy of life and love. May we look up from the ground of despair to hope on the horizon, and may we be filled with joy, for this is Easter. Amen. It's taken me two years to say this, but enjoy the choir. Now it's your turn to sing. We're going to sing our next hymn, our children's hymn, which is The Whole World is in God's Hand.
I would like to invite all the kids that are here to come up and see if you can fit in that front row or just on the floor up here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Easter to you. Happy Easter. Thank you, Dougie. <laughs> Did everybody have a good Easter so far? Yeah? Did anybody do an egg hunt so far? Yeah. Excellent. Did anybody do anything other than an egg hunt today so far? Nancy? The Easter Bunny left you a scavenger hunt to do. Awesome. Desiree? You walked your dog and you ate breakfast. Dougie? I got some Easter questions and what my first question is what is supposed to be the cross. That sounds like a fun morning too. So, uh, you guys are gonna have to excuse me this morning because it's gonna be a weird children's time. Here's the deal. I had to get up really early this morning because we did a service down at the, at the uh, waterfront. So I didn't have a chance to have breakfast. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna have breakfast while we do our children's time. Do you guys mind? <laughs> so, what do you guys like to have for breakfast? Uh, cereal. cereal, yeah? A breakfast sandwich, nice. Eli? Sorry? Oatmeal, Nancy? Cereal and waffles. Plenty of things. Thea? Toast? <laughs> you get to a certain age, right? <laughs> you guys ever had all brand? So it's very, very healthy. It's got, oh, I can't read it. It's got all kinds of nutrients in it, calcium, folate, phosphone, magnesium, zinc. Is that all good for you? Yeah, I guess, you know, this isn't exactly the, the um, meal that I wanted for Easter Sunday, but uh, yeah, here we go. Sorry, guys, that you're watching me. You have to eat my breakfast this morning. I know it's not the most exciting children's time. Okay, brand butts, here we go. It's filled with M&Ms. <laughs> the best breakfast ever. Hmm. <laughs> okay. I'm just fooling around with you guys, right? Did I set this up? Or is it an Easter miracle? <laughs> we'll never know. I'm gonna come down there for the rest of it so I can get a little bit closer to you guys. I'll tell you why I did that. Thank you. Oh, that tastes good. I did. I did it because I want to talk about surprises. And I hope that was kind of, that was a little bit of a surprise, right? How many people like surprises? We all like surprises, right? Well, Easter Sunday is about surprises. And when you look at the actual Easter story that we look at from the Bible, it was about a, it was about a surprise. Um, Jesus had died, and they put him in a, in, a, in a cave, and they rolled the stone away, and then somebody called Mary three days later on Easter Sunday, went to the, the tomb, and a stone had been rolled away, and Jesus wasn't there. He had risen. It was like a great big surprise, because what they expected never happened. So Easter is all about enjoying surprises. How many people here, can you think of a surprise you like? What's a good surprise? Jack? What's going to be inside an Easter egg when you open it? That's a great surprise. A birthday, a birthday surprise? A Christmas surprise? Anybody else?
Good one. You didn't get failed, but you actually get a really good score on a test. That's a really good example. So I think that, you know what I think? Oh, go ahead. When you watch a horror movie and you get a what? A jump scare. That's a surprise. That's cool. That's cool. So you know what I think? I think that if you look around, there are surprises everywhere that life can constantly surprise us. But you know why we don't often see it? Because we don't look at the world through surprise eyes. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to pretend to take out your eyes, and I want you to put in some, Sorry, Ruth. And I want you to put in surprise eyes. Okay. Now, imagine that we're going to go on a, on a walk in the forest, okay? And you're like, oh, I don't want to go for a walk in the forest. I, I want to stay home and watch TV, okay? Going for a walk in the forest, you might think it's boring and just look down. No, open your surprise eyes and look around. What might you see if you really look around in the forest? Animals, absolutely. I saw a snake the other day when I was in the forest. What? Trinity? Uh, new, life. new life, sure. Trinity, yep. Yeah. Thea? Um, mushrooms. mushrooms, yeah. Uh, like you might see mosquitoes? <laughs> Caterpillars, <laughs> you're going to see lots of those this year. <laughs> right, so you put your surprises and you look around and, and suddenly things get kind of interesting. Okay, let's say we go to the beach now, okay? We're at the beach, it's a nice, beautiful day. Put your surprise eyes in. What might you see at the beach if you look through surprise eyes that you might be surprised about? Ben? Crabs, Crabs yes. A shark? You never know. Yeah. See what? A boat? People, yes, people, and people are great to watch. Yeah. Waves? Seagulls eating people's lunches? You're a very, you're a very creative thinker. Well, hopefully I don't see a hurricane, but you never know, right? The point is, guys, when you put your surprise eyes in, it's amazing what you can see around you, some of the beautiful things that God has created around us. So Easter reminds us to go, try and go through life having surprise eyes and enjoying what we see around us, okay? Now, to show you that even you can be part of a surprise, on your way out today to join Lori for Sunday School, if you walk on the outside of the aisles, on either side, look in the windowsill, there's a surprise for everybody. But just take one, okay? Just take one on either side. Okay, let's, before we go, we're gonna have, bow our heads, we're gonna have a little prayer, and then we're gonna go on our way. Dear God, we thank you for this special day, this exciting day, this day that you remind us that you are always alive and around us in all kinds of surprises. And help us every day to go through life with surprise eyes. Amen. Okay, guys, throw that down on the outside. Have fun. You good? You're welcome to leave it uh, in, the, uh, in the bowl as you leave. Um, and uh, I'd like to say thank you again to all those who continue to give through PAR and all those watching who continue to support our church as well. It's very much appreciated. So let me offer a prayer of thanks, and then we'll have the doxology. Easter is a season for rebirth. 
It is a time to celebrate what is new and exciting in our lives and in our community. As we look ahead towards better days, we give thanks for the gifts given here freely that will help us to bring new ideas, new life, and new energy to this church. We give thanks for these gifts and those who give them in your name. Amen. The uh, Bible lesson today, on which I'm going to uh, share a few thoughts, is taken from the Gospel of Luke, and it's uh, Luke's version of the Easter story. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Now that same day, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus and talking with each other about all these things that had happened while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And so he asked them, what are you discussing with each other? They stood still and looked sad. And then one of them said, are you the only person in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place here in these days? That Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed, was condemned to death and crucified? We had hoped he was the one to redeem Israel, but sadly, he is not. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead of them as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our light. Amen. Tomb thou shalt not hold him longer. Death is strong. But life is stronger, stronger than the dark, the light, stronger than the wrong, the right. Faith and hope triumphant say, Christ will rise on Easter day. 
such powerful words of poetry. Those words written more than a century ago by Philip Brooks captures the significance of this day. Tomb thou shalt not hold him longer. Death is strong, but life is stronger. That's what today is about. It's about life. It's about collectively standing outside the tomb and proclaiming boldly and with great enthusiasm, he is risen. And that's what people are doing in every corner of the globe today, proclaiming life. From the great cathedrals in England to the tiny parishes of Cape Breton, from the suburbs of Kiev to the great Western metropolises, from hospital chapels to meeting rooms, in person, on YouTube, everywhere today, the faithful are proclaiming, death is strong, but life is stronger. And boy, oh boy, is that not a message that we need to hear? Is that not a message that we need to be excited about? Is that not a message that we need to own today? Because it feels like we've been stuck in the tomb for a long time now. As the COVID loop plays around and around and around. And that nasty little bug still has us in its grips. But this is the first Easter in two years where I feel like the stone has been nudged away. I can rub my tired eyes, stretch my weary limbs, take a few eager, if tentative, steps from the darkness of the past and see some sunlight of promise out there on the horizon. And I hope I'm not alone. This Easter feels like Easter. And to me, the beauty of this day is that it means something different to all of us. What it means to me, may be very different from what it means to you. It's why I've always loved the story of little three-year-old Nicole. She was so excited for Easter. A few days before the big day, her mom took her to the store to buy a new dress and a little white bonnet and a new pair of shiny shoes that she could wear to church. As she stood in the store looking in the mirror, the little girl said, I can't wait for Easter, mommy. The clerk in the store overheard her, and so she asked the little girl, do you know what Easter means? Little Nicole thought for a moment. Then she threw open her arms wide, and with a huge smile, she said, surprise. Can you think of a better definition of the word of Easter than that word surprise? And that's why to me, Easter isn't a day as much as it is an attitude. It's a way of not just seeing life, but approaching life. It's a perspective. It's a lens through which we choose to understand what life means. Surprise isn't just a thing for kids. Do you have your surprise eyes on? Do you see the flower in the field, the spider web on the bush, the shell on the beach? And again, as we move into what I dearly, dearly hope are post-COVID times, Easter 2022 is about shaking the dust off the past and starting to move into whatever the future has in store for us. And part of moving forward is having the right attitude. Attitude is like gas in the car. And what that attitude looks like is what I want to get into for a couple of minutes this morning. But to do that, let me get into the story of two, because it highlights for me what the biggest barrier is to living with an Easter attitude. So the Easter story that I chose to share with you today is not the classic one of Mary approaching the tomb. It's the Emmaus Road account of Jesus' resurrection. It was three days after the crucifixion, and two people are walking along the road to Emmaus, and they're having a conversation. The word used in the Bible for conversation, by the way, is literally translated as tossing words. I love that. We're going to go into West Daniel Hall later. We're going to toss some words. <laughs> anyway, we assume that these two men were disciples, and they were walking along, and they were commiserating. They were downcast. Because quite frankly, Jesus didn't meet their expectations. Instead of standing up to the powers that sought to bring him down, instead of trying to escape crucifixion, he seemed to have willingly give himself to be killed, thus ending the movement that he started. They even said to each other, we thought he was the one. They're disappointed. They're upset. While they're having this conversation, a stranger draws near to them. 
The stranger is the risen Jesus, but they don't know it's him. Jesus accompanies them along the road, quietly listening to their depressing conversation. It's not until the end of the story, when he sits down to eat together, that Jesus tells them who he is. And the men are amazed. He was the one after all. It's a simple story. But you know what the story is actually about? It's about expectations. Did you notice that? Why weren't the men able to recognize Jesus? Because they were blinded by their expectations. Their understanding of Jesus, who Jesus was, could only be one way. It couldn't possibly be another way. What is one of the great obstacles that we have to living with an Easter attitude? Expectations. So let's talk about that for a second. Expectations. Do you have them? For sure you do. You have them for your family. You have them for your church. You have them for your workplace. You have them for your friends, and you probably have them for yourself. Your expectations are your desire that things go a certain way. A bride was very nervous on the day of her wedding. So the minister who was officiating tried to calm her down, and he said, you know, let's take things one step at a time. The first thing I want you to focus on when you're at the back is the aisle. Just focus on the aisle. You've been walking up and down that aisle since you were a kid. And then he said, then focus on the altar. Just keep your eyes on the altar. That will keep you nice and calm. And finally, look at your husband, the man you're going to marry. Just focus on him. The wedding begins, and everything goes smoothly, and the bride gets up, and it all goes wonderfully. But the congregation's a little perplexed, because all the way along the aisle, all they heard the bride muttering was, I'll alter him. I'll <laughs> alter him. Expectations, right? <laughs> we all have them. But are they good for us? As the Easter story reminds us, sometimes our expectations can block us to seeing things in a new or fresh way. I read a very interesting definition of expectations. Someone said this, expectations are simply premeditated resentments. It's an insightful little comment. Expectations are premeditated resentments. When we have an expectation for something, we've already arrived at that place. And then we wait for everybody else to get there. And if they don't, what happens? We get resentful. In an article in Psychology Today, a woman shared this simple example. Her friend was having a birthday party. She planned a surprise party for her. The house was decorated, the friends were all there, there were beautiful gifts, great food. Her friend walked in the house and they all yelled, surprise. But then the woman who had hosted the party noticed that her friend wasn't as overwhelmed as she thought she was, she should be. She wasn't quite as surprised as she thought that she should be. She wasn't quite as enthusiastic as she wanted it to be. So while all the other guests enjoyed this wonderful party that had been put together, all she did there was sit and steam about it. Resentments. She ended up missing what was good. Expectations are premeditated resentments. And that's exactly what happened on the road to Emmaus. Those two men were so caught up in their expectations, they were resentful and they weren't met. And they couldn't see what was new and fresh and exciting right beside them. When we get too caught up in expectations, it's easy to miss what might be new and exciting. Now I know, expectations are a part of life. We all have them. We can't live without them. When I come to church in the morning, I expect that heat's going to be on. When I get my coffee at Tim Hortons, I expect that it's going to be good. When I think about the NHL playoffs, <laughs> I have expectations that the Leafs will get past the first round. Talk about premeditated resentments. But what if from a faith point of view, we could consider working on a post-expectation attitude for post-COVID times? A post-expectation attitude for post-COVID times. A way that we can begin to witness to what God might be doing in our lives that we never considered before because of our expectations. 
To me, there are three qualities that go into an Easter attitude. And again, I think that they are key to getting us into a new mindset as we hopefully emerge from these pandemic times. Number one, be curious. Curiosity is the opposite of expectations. Walt Disney said this, we keep moving forward, opening new doors, and doing new things because we're curious. And curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. And Walt Disney was an expert in leading down new paths. I truly believe that curiosity is one of the great untapped qualities of adulthood. Kids have tons of it. They're curious about everything. Life is an adventure when you're a kid. You want to know how, who, where. Everything has a question mark attached to it. Remember when we lived in Sussex, uh, New Brunswick, we had an, an internal vacuuming system. So there was like this super long hose that you could just plug into the wall and it would vacuum. I think this thing must have been 25 or 30 feet long. It was huge. So um, whenever Lori would vacuum, I mean, whenever I would vacuum, <laughs> my son Mike, who was four years old at the time, would sit on the floor and he would play with that hose and he would constantly turn it into, into roller coasters. And we keep saying, look at this one, look at this one. Never stop being fascinated how they could become roller coasters. Now he's taking engineering, so maybe he's gonna end up making real roller coasters one day. But that's a curious spirit. Somewhere we lose that curiosity. We outgrow it. And I'm not sure why, but it's like we shift from curiosity to certainty. We wanna focus on what we know, rather than continuing our quest to discover what we don't know. That's what those two guys on the Emmaus Road did. Their certainty blinded them to what was new and exciting just an arm's length away. But how sad that is. Because the world is no less of an adventure than when we were children. We just stopped treating it that way. But there's still so much to discover. Books to read, people to meet, experiences to have. Just this weekend, I thought, I'm gonna really test this out. I went and bought myself a mint shirt. Never in my life have I had a mint shirt. Never did I think I was gonna wear a mint shirt. Curiosity led me to that. <laughs> it's not all about me, don't worry about my shirt. <laughs> and I know COVID took a lot of that away from some of us. We were forced to keep the world at arm's length because to be too curious would end up making us spend a week in bed but it's time to fire up that curious spirit again. Time to start getting out there and see what God is still doing in the world. Swap our certainty for curiosity. Be like Anna Stower. Anna Stower is 114 years old. She just had to lie on an application to say she was 99. Do you know why? The application was to get a Facebook account and the system didn't allow for someone with three digits to put their number in. <laughs> 114 years old and getting a Facebook account. Now that's a curious spirit. E.E. E. Cummings, the poet, said this, once we believe in ourselves, we can risk curiosity, wonder, spontaneous delight, or any experience that reveals the human spirit. Being curious is the first step towards a post-expectation Easter spirit. What about the second one? It is be courageous. The writer Ananias Nan once said, life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. That's a great quote. When we are fearful, life can get very small. Our ideas get small, our perspectives get small. Fear shrinks the world around us. But courage does exactly the opposite. It expands the world. When we take risks and take chances, put ourselves out there, the world gets bigger. Opportunities increase. Our perspective widens. I was speaking to someone a few weeks ago and we were talking about COVID and what maybe post-COVID world would look like. And he said to me, he goes, you know, my word from now on is simply going to be yes. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, the past two years, all I've ever heard is the word no, in the form of no, you can't do this, no, you can't go there, no, you can't have that. He said, I found myself getting negative as I was feeding off the negative of the entire situation. So going forward, he said, I'm going to start thinking yes, and I'm gonna try this. Yes, I will meet with you. Yes, I will have this experience. Yes, I will do this. So I asked him, do you wanna give $10,000 to the church? Yeah. 
He set himself up for that one. But there was a man who saw his world shrinking with negativity and fear and decided to turn it around to a positive attitude, a yes attitude, a courageous attitude, so that the world could start to expand again. His world could start to expand again. Again, to go back to the Emmaus Road story, what stopped those two men from experiencing Jesus was negativity. I've always thought the reason that they didn't see him standing beside them was because they were looking at their feet, because that's what we do when we're negative. We look down. As they walked along, the conversation was peppered with no, no, no. They could not have this wonderful experience. But here's the kicker. When, when did they finally see Jesus? When they invited him to join them for dinner. The Bible says that when they sat down to eat, that was when Jesus was revealed to them. It was when they got their eyes up off that negative attitude took a courageous step in inviting a stranger to be with them, that their perspective changed and their eyes were open. So many of our worlds have shrunk these past two years. It's now time to start expanding outward again. And the way we do that is by taking risks and having a courageous attitude. The way we do that is just what that man was speaking about, trying to embrace the word yes. I know that that's what this church is going to need going forward. It needs people who are going to say yes, 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 and then bring that expansive, positive attitude to what we are doing and rebuilding here. The Ojibwe writer Richard Wagamese put it this way, there are a thousand ways in the world to say no. There's only one way to say yes, with your whole being. When you do that, you choose that word, it becomes the most spiritual in the universe and your world can change. A positive Easter attitude is a curious attitude, it is a courageous attitude, and finally, it is a gentle attitude. There's a beautiful, there's a Buddhist teacher, forgive me if I get his name wrong, but I believe it's Achan Cha, and he had a great thought about life. Every morning when he gets up, he drinks water, and he drinks it from a broken goblet or like a broken cup. He says it's a cup that has been put back together. He says it holds the water fine. He says when he's finished, he puts it on the windowsill and often when the sun comes in, it hits the cracks and it makes beautiful rainbows on the wall. But he says, because it is broken, it means he has to treat it with nothing less than care because he knows otherwise it will shatter. So he handles that goblet with gentleness and carefully. He says he does that to start his day because he believes that's the way to treat life as well. To treat life like a broken goblet. He tries to see everyone as fragile, to see the world as fragile. So rather than treating it as something that cannot ever be broken, he treats everyone and everything as if it could be broken the next day. And thus he treats it mindfully, carefully, respectfully, almost with sacredness, to preserve it, to keep it, to allow the light to shine through it and reveal its beauty. This, he says, is how to approach life. I absolutely love that idea. One of the things we've all learned this past two years is that life is fragile and the world is fragile. We are fragile. We have in many ways confronted collectively our own vulnerability. We've all discovered that life isn't a rubber ball that bounces back when you toss it. It's more like a broken goblet, capable of great beauty, but needful of gentleness and care. And that's just not life in general, but that's life in all of its parts. Our environment, beautiful, but fragile. Handle it with care. Our relationships, beautiful, but fragile, handle with care. Our physical health, our mental health, beautiful, but fragile, handle with care. You know, I think one of the expectations that I had all, all my life prior to COVID was my belief somehow that everything around me was unbreakable. That sort of false confidence that eh, there's never anything to worry about really. I don't think that way anymore. What I see now is more a fragile world and fragile lives in it. 
That's not a bad thing. I think it's a good thing because it gently reminds us that I have to treat life with that gentle sacredness. I can't take anything for granted. But it also reminds me even more that the simplest things, they truly are the things of greatest value. Human kindness, compassion to those in need, the value of friendship and community. These are the things that make life worth living. These are the key components in building a good Easter attitude. To hold the world, to hold all of life like a broken goblet, is to recognize that we are all called to live humbly, gently, peacefully, and with the greatest respect for all of life in all of its forms. That's how we release its greatest beauty. To whom thou shalt not hold him longer, death is strong, but life is stronger. Once again, that's what today is all about. It's about saying yes to life. It's an attitude. It's about climbing out of the dark and the dusty tomb, rubbing our eyes, stretching our arms and saying, I'm not done with life and life is not done with me. And then going forward with a curious, a courageous and a gentle attitude to continue to witness to the glory of God's world and God's greatest miracle, which is life itself. Amen. I'm going to share a prayer, and at the end of the prayer, I'm going to share the we are we are going to share the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. God of Easter, we give thanks for the blessings of this service. Sitting here in the beauty of the flowers with inspiring notes of music, in spoken word of story and prayer, all our senses have been awakened. We have been given in the story of Easter a pattern for life inviting us to a life of curiosity and courage, a life of a gentle and sacred attitude that preserves, protects, and promotes life. May the attitude that we take from here guide our feet in the paths of love and goodwill to all. On this day when we think of family, may we be grateful to those who share our journey of life with us. Today on a day when we remember people, May we be grateful for those who've gone before us and yet whose lives still inspire and equip our own. As we continue in prayer, we think of all the individual prayers that we feel in our hearts today. And so in the solemn silence of this sanctuary, let us take a moment to offer our prayers for ourselves, our loved ones, and our world. God of Easter, as we leave here today, may we take with us a refreshed and renewed spirit, a yes spirit, an inspired spirit, and may we enjoy this season of new life that is budding all around us, for we know that we live in your world. And hear us now as we continue in prayer by singing the Lord's Prayer.
closing hymn is a new hymn for everybody. We're here that a man found us, and we've got a, the, the band here to lead us uh, in singing it. So I invite you to stand, do your best, and enjoy this piece of music. Joyful noise. the rest of your day and your weekend and thank you to everybody who joined us online as well let's close now with our benediction and then go now in peace you have heard the story of easter now it is time to live the story of easter with, of and faithful with kind words and creative ideas with and hearts open to respond Go, our wonderful world is ready for what you have to offer. Amen.